Okay, hopefully this is visible enough. I know when I go in and out, you get those weird lines. And I forgot the name of that effect, but uh, let me see if it does it. That right there. It's that weird sort of effect where you get those strange, almost trippy looking geometric lines. It has to do with the pixels. You already know that though. I always just thought it was trippy. All right, so what I'm here for. Let me show you the test and let me run it. So you can kind of see what I'm doing here is I'm trying to get the generic form, just the form, and then it stops right there and it's only here at the higher frequencies, the higher frequencies that I consider. So this gives me from frequency zero to frequency whatever, call it the critical frequency, it's a low frequency, and it's up to this frequency that I get a general form. I think if I actually go into the code real quick, I can at least explain this where I find the frequency. Okay, here it is. Right here, FCA. So FCA is my lower frequency. This is like, uh, I guess if you correspond the time, this is, corresponds to 0 0.125 hertz, which sounds like it's a very uh, low frequency. Um, and it is, but it's not like I need to go out that far to get the general form, I guess is what I'm trying to say. 0 0.125 hertz is the low frequency, and it might sound strange to say beyond 0 0.125 hertz, that's where the higher frequencies are, because 0 0.125 hertz is a low frequency to us normally. But we're dealing with millimeters here, and because we're dealing with such small units, that uh, it turns out that the higher frequencies correspond to 0 0.125 and I guess it's not hertz, it's truly one over millimeter, or inverse millimeter. So th this basically gives you your lower frequency right here. And then because when I downsample, the highest frequency I have is one hertz, like on the spectrum, if I actually downsample, you'll only see one hertz as my highest frequency. To be consistent with the area that I'm finding under the curve at that highest downsampling, with the, which is the lowest amount of points, to be consistent, I for all of my uh, functions, sorry, for all of my profile data, I only find the area in the spectrum between 0 0.125 hertz and one hertz, and you'll see that in a moment. You'll see that in a moment. So back to this, all right. So this is the form, the general form and the waviness, I guess you can say, the form and the waviness. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the area underneath the uh, frequency spectrum, and that'll be my That'll be my um, roughness measurement. So right here, let me just show you. Yeah, I'm getting those wavy lines. Let me just show you. See, it looks like it's from 0 0.125 right here all the way to 1. And it's spatial frequency. And what I'm doing is I'm finding the area underneath this curve, which, you know, if you zoom in, it's all kind of trippy and shit. You'll see, you know finding the area under there. Um, let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about when I downsample, just to make it clear. But, oh, and my roughness for this is 8.41. I, I think it's unitless. It might not be unitless, actually. Um, no, it's unitless because you're integrating and my, my frequency spectrum is in units of one over one millimeter, and then my, my radius is in units of millimeters. So when I take the area underneath the curve, a millimeter times one over a millimeter is one. So it's unitless, that's right, yeah, so. I always have to repeat the argument to myself. All right, so let me go ahead and show you what happens. So this is downsampling so that I take every, I keep every sixth element. Let me go ahead and downsample so that I keep every 10th element. All right, all right, and let's run it. Just showing you again getting the general waviness. So, see, get it right there. So I get the form, and then it's at the higher frequencies that I actually get the roughness of this. And let me go ahead and, um, oh, pardon me. Let me go ahead and show you what I mean when I down to the 10. See, the highest frequency I have is now, and I'm in quotes calling it one hertz, but you know it's really one over a millimeter. I'm getting one uh, of those. So, 
again to stay consistent when I downsample say I keep every fourth element since I all right, let it do its thing get the waviness okay I think you got it yep See, then I, I get this much. The curve kind of looks a little different, but I get pretty much the same number. Um, this is the kind of kind of uh, this is the kind of weird stuff that happen, ha happens when you downsample. And like I said, it, from uh, 0 0.125 to one. So again, to stay consistent with the spectrum that I'm considering, I only integrate from there to there. Even though I would like to have as much frequency as I could, I can, just to stay consistent, only consider this spectrum, this interval of the frequency. All right, um, and let me show you, uh, I'll just consider another one. I'll consider LO4 right now, which is the, uh, as it happens, it's the fourth profile. So I'll just enter four right here. And I'll get a different curve now and show you that it's kind of it's working pretty much the same way for the other uh, frequency. Sorry, for the other profiles. So you get the general form, right? And then after this is when I consider the higher frequencies. Oh, what am I doing? I'm gonna have to scroll down. Zero to one. So this kind of just gives you an idea of what I'm doing. Roughness for that was 9.9. .9. Let's see what happens if I consider every point and not every fourth point. I should probably get something close to 9.9. .9. Be nice to you. Okay, get the general form. And 9.76. A little bit happens, a little bit slightly off. But, you know, that's actually pretty good considering what I was getting before. Is getting magnitudes of 10, magnitudes of 100 off. Hey, what's up, Ivan?